Good morning. Uh, our first of two questions is to Joseph Allen or Dale Gardner. Would you please describe the damage done to the Palapa and West Star satellites during retrieval and berthing, and how you assess the effectiveness of the handheld technique that you used versus the planned mechanical technique to berth the satellites in terms of possible future shuttle recovery missions? When customers are not as vulnerable to fluctuations in the economy, and Nelson Forrest of the Great. <laughs> I wonder if they heard our first question. Discovery, this is uh, CNN in Atlanta. Do you hear us? Apparently, we're having some problem uh, we'll, uh, with our, uh, our question getting up to the uh, shuttle Discovery. The expressions on their face indicate it's not quite the same uh, telephone line that we should be using. So we'll keep trying here to uh, begin this news conference. Uh, Discovery, this is CNN in Atlanta. Can you hear us? I guess they can't hear us. We obviously have a cross... Uh, cross connections in our audio that's uh, going up okay, to the show. Okay, we'll, we'll go to uh, Bill Curtis at CBS. Go ahead, CBS. Okay, we'll go to questions uh, in Houston until we get the uh, network difficulty straightened out. Uh, Buddy uh, Lumen, uh, United Press International. This is a question for Joe Allen and Dale Gardner. At any time during your spacewalks, was there ever a moment when you thought you might not be able to pull it off? United Associated Press. Uh, for Joe Allen and Del Gardner, uh, what in, uh, to get your, the view from your perspective, uh, what is the significance of the fact that you were able to uh, capture these satellites and then handle them manually uh, and put them into the cargo bay? The significance so far as the future of the, uh, the space program is concerned. Well, Paul, one of the things we've always wondered about is is uh, an EVA crewman's ability to handle large masses, and uh, we certainly had the chance to uh, give that a try on these two EVAs. Uh, Joe and I each had in our hands at one time or another uh, over a ton of, ma of mass, a ton of weight there on the ground, and had absolutely no difficulty moving them around. But the caveat to that is you, ha you really have to have your feet locked in some place where your body then is uh, controllable and so that you can control the spacecraft. But uh, with that... Uh, Knowing that you have your feet locked in, it was really easy to do, and uh, Joe and I found it to, to be a simple task. John Getter, KHOU TV. Question for Joe Allen. Uh, while you were away, the Congressional Office of Technology Assessment has issued a report saying the space station cannot be justified on scientific or other grounds and recommends that it not be funded that it is only perhaps a project aimed at giving NASA a way to justify its existence. That is a quote. 
You were one of NASA's congressional liaisons back when nearly the same thing was said about the space shuttle. I'd like to ask you, given that experience and combining it with what you and the rest of the crew have just done, what are your thoughts on that statement? Well, John, that's a tough question, but the space shuttle speaks for itself, and I see no reason the space station won't speak in exactly the same language. Seems obvious to me. Jim Asker with the Houston Post. Um, I'd like to ask uh, Dale Gardner and uh, Rick Houck uh, what they make of the uh, decision to send Senator Jake Garn on the space shuttle. Well, we had, we had heard that that was, uh, that decision was made, I think, the day before we launched into space. Of course, we're always anxious to have knowledgeable people uh, uh, who are interested in the space program become more knowledgeable, and uh, perhaps this is a way for that uh, knowledge to be shared amongst uh, folks that uh, have in the past showed uh, support for the shuttle and, uh, and will uh, perhaps make their uh, inputs even uh, more knowledgeable. Carlos Byers, Houston Chronicle. For the EVA crewman, flying the MMUs I'd like for you to comment on the, on the flying of the MMUs and also on the possibility of capturing a satellite without the use of an MMU as, uh, in a sense, uh, Joe was doing out on the end of the arm. Well, uh, between the two EDAs, we had to make that decision as, what we're, as to what we're going to do, whether to uh, attempt to uh, do it again with the MMU or to try to uh, grab it by hand, and we on the ground uh, thought that over very carefully. And the decision we finally made was to go with the MMU again, since we knew that that would work. It had worked uh, well on the, on the first EVA. Uh, Joe and I, after having moved the satellites around by hand in the bay, were, I think, are fairly confident that given those same conditions, satellites of that size and spin rates and wobble rates not any larger than what we saw, that we probably could have grabbed them, grabbed them by hand also. Uh, I still think our decision for the second EVA was a good one. We went with what we knew was a proven technique and, uh, and uh, got the second satellite into the base successfully. Okay, we'll go to uh, New York now and Bryant Gumbel at, a at NBC. Arm, uh, the end of that robot arm. Uh, David, that was one of the things I think of. Uh, belay that uh, NBC call. Go ahead, please. Okay, we'll come back here to question. Susan Starnes, KPRC TV. For Joe or Dale, I'd like to know if you think that uh, your stowing of the uh, two satellites by hand perhaps shows that the technology <coughs> does exist for assembling the pieces of a space station. Should Congress go ahead and authorize that? Uh, Susan, as you know, the... Uh the uh, construction of a space station has already been authorized by Congress and by the President. And it's, uh, of course, an annual uh, consideration as to uh, at what speed we do this, but there's no question about the direction this country's going as the, as, uh, the Congress leads and the President leads. Uh, now, with regard to the, the way that it's done, that uh, is still being studied very much. The large structures on Earth are built by uh, skilled workers, and, and uh, structures here in space will be built by, uh, by workers as well, and sometimes moving large pieces of equipment. I don't see that there's much, much difference, really. Stephen Govain, KTRH-TV. KTRK-TV, thank you. Uh, for Dr. Fisher, uh, Dr. Fisher, the other Dr. Fisher, seems to be doing well in handling Kristen uh, during your absence. I'd like you to know that. I'd like to also ask you if there's any difference in operating the arm with a person on the end of it. Not really. Uh, the arm, I could hardly tell that Joe was there. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the arm is uh, very easy to operate, uh, even with uh, a large mass, is when we were moving the satellite. But with uh, Joe on board, I tried to give him a gentle ride, but uh, you really can't tell that small uh, a difference in mass. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, uh, Mike Meacham, uh, Gannett News Service. For either uh, Joe or Dale, it looked to us as if, uh, particularly on the first space walk, that you might be getting a little tired, um, particularly uh, Joe holding the satellite. How tiring was that uh, experience? <coughs> always in sight and so you uh, try to pace yourself and continue to the end. We've done a lot of work in Houston in uh, all sorts of simulations, some of them that would last six, seven, eight hours and at the end of that time you know that uh, you've done quite a lot of work and these EBAs were no exception. In many ways the second EBA was, uh, was just as tiring because we'd had only one day to rest between the two. Okay, we'll go to New York and uh, David Hartman at ABC. Go ahead, ABC. What, uh, Gene, we're going to break here. I think, we, I think we're going to go up uh, and talk to the shuttle. Don't go away. Uh, we'll go right now to the shuttle. The five astronauts are up there, and I'm going to try to talk to both Joe Allen and Dr. Anna Fisher. Uh, Joe Allen, David Hartman in New York, can you hear me? Joe Allen. I surely can, David. Good morning. Okay, I see you talking. The picture is great, but I can't hear you at the moment. Joe, give it another <laughs> shot, would you? Okay, uh, can you hear me now, David? Loud and clear, Joe, thank you. You've been out there before, Joe, two years ago. This job you did over the last couple of days seemed much bigger, much more strenuous much more involved. Compare the two experiences, would you? And while they continue the questioning, we're going to break away for just a moment. Well, I sure enjoyed it, and uh, looking forward to coming home tomorrow. Dale and Joe, in a, in a very personal sense, what do you do now for an encore? Can, can any experience in your future possibly match what you have been through this week? <laughs> well, Brian, I have to go home and pay a lot of bills, unfortunately, so that's my next move. I'll turn it over to Joe. My grass needs mowing. Uh, that, those are the kind of simple tasks you're thinking of now? <laughs> uh, Brian, we may not have heard the uh, question properly. Ask it again if you would. Difficult decision Babyface's mother had to make. In Boston, there is... Okay, we'll go to CBS and Bill Curtis in New York. Hospital Medical Center. The child had the same problem as Baby Faye. He had no left heart ventricle. He was flown to Boston Tuesday after a surgical team at Loma Linda decided not to try and give him a baboon transplant. <laughs> now let's go to the Discovery Shuttle oh. astronauts. If everybody is up there, can you? We'll give you a little news down here. We're joining it right in the middle of our uh, our newscast, and everybody is floating around. Dale Gardner and. Uh, Joe Allen and Anna Fisher, we can see you, and David Walker and Frederick Hout, and you're waving to us. Uh, Joe Allen, can you hear us? Let's go back to that moment when you first laid your hands upon the satellite. It seemed so surprisingly easy to stop it. Uh, what was going through your mind at that time? Well, I was uh, pleased to have docked with it. It indeed was very easy to stop it, uh, partly because the satellite is only about as massive as a suited uh, crewman with uh, all the, the suit gear and the maneuvering unit gear uh, attached to them. Uh, and so it was a, a standoff or a tie, if you will. I slowed the satellite down, and it started me spinning a little bit. Uh, it looks as though everybody had better gain some weight. You're floating away there. Joe, I thought that was just a big stunt to promote your book. It's very, very good indeed. Commander Howe, can we talk to you for just a moment? How is this going to change yes, sir, Bill. the way the shuttle missions are going to be conducted in the future? Well, I think it'll, ex it'll ex point the way towards a, an expansive way that we can use the shuttle. Certainly, we've demonstrated a capability that is envisioned and has been envisioned for the shuttle for a long time. The shuttle, of course, is a, is a major part of the space station system, and the shuttle, uh, by its own name, implies that we're going to be shuttling things uh, up to and back from uh, space station and uh, other uh, 
stations in orbit. So I think we're in the building block sense doing what NASA hoped to do all along, and that is to uh, use this very versatile machine the way it ought to be used. Thank you all. Congratulations. It was a great day yesterday. Have a good trip home tomorrow, and you look terrific. What a thrill for us, too. Thank you, Bill. Live Charles, Charles Crawford, Cable News Network in Atlanta. Good morning, and our question is first to either Joseph Allen or Dale Gardner. Would you please describe what kind of damage was sustained when you retrieved and birthed the, uh, the two satellites? Well, we're not really sure because, uh, unfortunately, we didn't have enough time out there to do a complete inspection before coming in. We suspect that uh, because of the way we had to manually bring the satellites in, that uh, Joe and I and our suits may at times have, uh, have touched some of the solar cells that go around the satellite to provide electrical power. However, I think those are probably uh, repairable back on the ground. Except, uh, except for that, we're going to have to wait till we get them on the ground and uh, have the experts take a look. Our other question is to Commander Hauk. You uh, previously were asked about uh, uh, Senator uh, Garn going on a, as a passenger on the shuttle. I wonder how you'd answer the critics who suggest that uh, such an idea is a waste of taxpayers' money and will mean that valuable scientific experiments will have to be postponed or perhaps even scrubbed. Well, I, I think there, uh, there's a qualitative and there's a quantitative way to look at uh, that question. Quantitatively, from the scientific aspect, uh, certainly you want to maximize your time and space, but numbers aren't everything, and it's important that we uh, get uh, views from uh, folks that uh, view the space program from all different aspects, and, and I think that uh, Senator Gagarin, with his aviation background and uh, his common sense approach to things, will... Uh, be able to bring back to his uh, fellow senators and congressmen in Washington uh, some insights that uh, they might not otherwise have. We thank you, and from all of us here at CNN, we wish you a safe return to Earth on Friday morning. From the president, there he is. Is this Rick? Yes, sir. How you doing, Mr. President? Well, just fine, and you. It's good to hear your voice. I'd like to say hello to all the crew members and just tell you how proud we are of you and what has been accomplished. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, it, was a, it was a difficult task, but one that was fun and uh, involved a lot of hard effort on a lot of people's part uh, here and on the ground. Well, can I just say, Joe, you and Dale deserve a lot of credit for retrieving those satellites. You know, we've got a little gym here at the White House, and I pump a little iron whenever I get the chance, but um, I don't know about that satellite lifting. Maybe that'll become a new high-tech Olympic sport. Seriously, what's it like Mr. to hoist President, one and hold a thousand-pound satellite? We can recommend space for that. A uh, thousand-pound satellite up here weighs nothing at all. <laughs> that should happen in my gym. Rick, you and Dave and Anna were a great team, keeping the Discovery right in position and working the Canadian arm during the retrieval operation. I guess you may have been a little busier than on previous flights since you've been taking on some cargo. Yes, sir, Mr. President, maybe a little bit, but uh, of course all the missions are busy and, and we all are always working hard. Well, Joe and Dale, how did the space backpack work for you, I guess? Uh, well, I, I'm sure it would have been hard to retrieve those satellites without it. Mr. President, that uh, man maneuvering unit uh, worked perfectly for both Joe on the first EVA and for myself on the second. The, uh, the docking with the satellite, its capture was uh, exactly as uh, we had trained to in simulators in the ground. It was a real pleasure doing it. Uh, that's just great, and we were all keeping track and everyone down here rooting and praying for you. Anna, since this is your first flight, uh, are there any surprises that you've encountered, and I couldn't help but wonder if you'd recommend a career as an astronaut to your daughter, Kristen. Oh, that I would, Mr. President. Um, the experience is uh, just everything I expected and even more. Uh, seeing the world below us, it makes you realize just uh, how we're all just part of this world. It's a truly incredible experience, and I'm going to recommend it to her highly. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, 